he can't even, he's so modest, he doesn't even look at her, look up at her, he had her face, right? He kind of is looking down while they're having this discussion. How respectful they went about it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. I'm Amna. Today I will react to the greatest love story in Islam, Khadija and Muhammad's وسلم, journey of love. Dr. Rania Awad. So this is really interesting to me because, to be honest, I don't know everything about their story. You know, I don't know a few things. Obviously, I know that this is his first marriage and his first love. So when he was married to her, she was the only wife of his, their entire marriage, until like, she passed away. Uh, she was actually also older than him. She was also a widow. So without further ado, let's watch this video. Bismillah. Satina Khadija finally says to her, well, I've been thinking about proposing to Muhammad, but I don't know how. I don't know. I mean, not only is it so uncustomary of her time, but how do you do this, right? So being the good friend that Nafisa is, she says, I'll take care of it. <laughs> it's really, you'll do that for me? Yes, I'll do that for you. And so she does this in a beautiful etiquette way because you don't know, right? What if he's already thinking of someone else? Like, how do you, you know, how do you, you don't want to put her in an embarrassing situation either. So Nafisa goes over to Sayyidina Muhammad and she, it's a very beautiful how she asks this. She says to him, you know, her exact words are, what is preventing you from getting married? And in this period of time, she has this discussion with Waraka because she hears from him constantly, because he's very, he keeps on saying this message over and over, there is a prophet to come and he's eminent, it's happening, it's in the Torah, it's in the gospel, it is happening, it is coming. So she's hearing this very regularly. And one night she has a dream. She doesn't know what the dream means, but she's, it's just, it's just, it's just like her father's dream, she's just so happy when she wakes up and doesn't know what to make of it. And so she goes to Waraka to ask, what does this dream mean? And here's how the dream goes. She sees that there's a star in the sky and it separates from the rest of the stars and falls into her lap, literally. And it enters into her chest and comes out into her arms. And then after that it ascends and the entire sky is drenched in light. It's this beautiful dream. And she wakes up happy and just excited about it, but doesn't know what this means. And so she goes to Waraka and explains to him the dream and he says, the Prophet has come. The Prophet has come. This is about the Prophet. And your home will be drenched in light. It'll have light enter into it. And she said, well, that's wonderful. But what does this have to do with me? <laughs> and so he foretells some narrations say that he actually tells her, you will marry the Prophet. And in other narrations, we just know that, you know, he says to her that light is going to enter your home. SubhanAllah. And so in this same period of time, she carries on with her business, and all of you know the story now, while well, you're going to connect the dots of where, what happens next. She has a caravan going to Damascus. She's in Mecca. There's a caravan going to Damascus, and it's a far distance, three months of a journey. And she needs a very trustworthy person. Now, the people of Quraysh here, that Khadija, the wealthy woman, needs a very trustworthy person. So many people want to be this position. She's going to pay them well. Now, in the same period of time, <laughs> you know the rest of this part, right? Abu Talib, who is who exactly is Abu Talib? The uncle of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who's taken in the Prophet وسلم, right after Abdul Muttalib has passed away. So now he's being raised in his uncle's home. He's a young man. He's a young, he's a shab, a young man, and he's um, and Abu Talib is actually not wealthy. And there are many mouths to feed. And so Abu Talib hears about Khadija's caravan. And so he says to Muhammad, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, why don't you go and take that job? She'll pay well, and you are trustworthy, and she's looking for a trustworthy person. And the Prophet's nickname was what? And Sa Al Amin, Sadiq Al Amin. Very good. Inshallah. And so he says, okay, but Yani, what, what would she really, I mean, is, is I going to be Yani? <laughs> and so he says, absolutely. And look at how beautiful this is. They send an intermediary, the Prophet's uncle, uh, aunt rather, to ask Satina Khadija, would this be the right fit? 
that's the Khadijah surprise because she's been hearing about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a very honorable and kind of trustworthy person, but she doesn't think he'd be very interested in this caravan, right? Because he's like very noble, like you know, an orphan, not well to do, but very honorable, right? And so when they come to have a business discussion about whether or not it should be the Prophet, he can't even, he's so modest, he doesn't even look at her, look up at her, he had her face, right? He kind of is looking down while they're having this discussion. And she's very happy because she feels like if it'll be Muhammad taking my caravan over, then I won't be swindled, I won't be cheated, right? Like she's at the mercy of whoever is going to go take the caravan over. And so she decides and says to him, if you take the caravan, I'll give you not just the two camels that are, you know, guaranteed her, you know, that's how much she owes for this, I'll give you more. But it's not about that for the Prophet ﷺ, right? It's because his uncle had asked him and said, you know, we need, we need some help here. Why don't you take this job? Anyhow, she's very excited because she notices things immediately about the Prophet ﷺ. For example, she notices that honesty kind of right away. And she starts to wonder, you know, because she's been hearing from her, from Waraqa, you know, that there's a prophet eminent, but she doesn't know exactly who this is. But she asks Waraqa, tell me some descriptions about this person, because you speak about them from everything you read in the Gospel of the Torah as though you know what they look like and who they are. And so he says, sure, I'll tell you some characteristics. So this is what he tells her. He says, this person will never reciprocate evil with evil. He will not raise his voice. He is forgiving and he's very merciful. He rides donkeys and camels and he shepherds, you know, he's a shepherd and he milks sheep. He wears patches on his clothing. And he has a sign between his shoulder blades that's called the mark of the prophet that all the other prophets had as well. And his name will be Ahmed. SubhanAllah. So back now to the story about Sayyidina Muhammad, where it's time for him to take her caravan. So she calls her servant. What's her servant's name? Maysara. And she tells Maysara, this is going to be the leader of the caravan. Do not let him out of your sight. Everything he does, everything he says, I want a full report afterwards. <laughs> she has a sense about him, but she's not really sure, and she wants a full report. So Maysara says, of course. And so off they go on this caravan, and so many things start to happen in this journey that she notices and that he notices, Vaisara as well. And you know the stories here. We're not going to repeat all of them because you know them, subhanAllah, of the cloud that sh that's shading the Prophet sallallahu wherever he goes. That every time that he, him or Vaisara are thirsty, he just kind of hits the ground and water <laughs> springs up from wherever, the, and they're in the middle of the desert, right? So here she, so she hears this from Mesa and hears all these other amazing things and she feels like, you know, like when that enters into your heart and you're like, I wonder if this is him. <laughs> right? SubhanAllah. So anyhow, she, she contemplates this and from two years, back and forth in her head, back and forth, you know, you know how, do, how do I make this move? Because again, in the list of things unique to her, by this point in time, she's 40. And how old is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He's 25. She's 15 years his senior. Yeah, so I and knew so she that asks part. for the thesis and, and Satuna Khadija finally says to her, well, I've been thinking about proposing to Muhammad, but I don't know how. I don't know. I mean, not only is it so uncustomary of her time, but how do you do this, right? So <laughs> being the good friend that Nafisa is, she says, I'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, really, you'll do that for me? Yes, I'll do that for you. And so she does this in a beautiful etiquette way because you don't know, right? What if he's already thinking of someone else? Like, how do you, you know, how do you, you don't want to put her in an embarrassing situation either. So Nafisa goes over to Sayyidina Muhammad and she, it's very beautiful how she asks this. She says to him, you know, her exact words are, what is preventing you from getting married? <laughs> <laughs> now, are you married? Are you interested? No, no, no. You know, What's preventing you from getting married? And so the Prophet ﷺ tells, you know, Nafisa, and he says to her, um, I'm not in a financial position to do so. I can't take care of a wife and a family, and I don't have the, the means. So Nafisa very smartly says to him, what if the means were not an issue? <laughs> what if that wasn't a problem? What if the woman was wealthy and beautiful and honorable? 
And so the Prophet Sallallahu says, well, who's that? <laughs> and she says to him, Khadija. And so he's, you know, he's kind of, he, he didn't say no. He was kind of quiet and he's interested. And so she's very excited, right? And if he says, I'm about to rush over to that Khadija and tell her, you know, that there is a potential here, subhanAllah. Anyhow, she consults, so he, the Prophet said, consults his uncle Abu Talib, who thinks that this is a good match. And Sister Khadija consults her uncle, right? And they think it's a good match. And subhanAllah, right, for sake of time, we'll just kind of wrap, wrap this piece together and say, both families agree, and alhamdulillah, both are represented by their uncles and they're wed. SubhanAllah. She's 40, mm. here's 25. She's previously married twice and has three children. He's never been married. What's to come after this is an amazing marriage. Something you can take all week talking about the marriage of Sittada Khadija and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hmm. It was really nice to learn about their story. I didn't know this, that Khadija was actually the one who proposed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, I didn't know like how this happened, like about their story, how they got married and like that. I I only knew like some details about them. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> it's, it's really like rare, you know, to hear about a woman who is like older and with children and a widow who gets married to like a young man, like 25 years old. But yeah, it's really rare to hear about that nowadays. It's a beautiful story. Yeah, just hearing about this story, like I can see like how respectful they went about it. <laughs> like it was said in the video, like he didn't even look like at her face and at her, you know, like at her appearance. And it was just really like respectful and especially like knowing about more about their marriage and their story then you can like truly say that this was like true love may allah grant us all a pious righteous spouse i mean all to those who are looking and searching i hope you all find your person thank you all for watching this video see you next time assalamu alaikum